Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a go find a back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something in particular that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to do it. So today, I'm going to be reacting to 10 surprising differences. 10 surprising differences between Islam and Hinduism. Hinduism. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. I have confidence in my heart that we can live together despite our differences. Islam and Hinduism are two of the top three most popular religions in the entire world, with the Islamic world's population sitting at 1.8 billion and Hinduism sits at 1.08 billion. What's happening guys? This is Leroy Kenton here and you're watching FTD Facts. And I'm about to jump into 10 of some of the biggest differences between Islam and Hinduism to help highlight what makes these religions unique and also clear up any confusion that you may have about each of these religions. Now the first difference difference I want to take a look at is their belief in life after death. The concept of life and death in Hinduism is a constant circle of reincarnation until enlightenment is achieved. For Muslims, they have a much different belief. One that's more of a, this is your only chance, get your act together right now kind of belief. According to Islamic teachings, all human beings are created with the ability to reason and to make intelligent choices and will be accountable to God on the day of judgment. They'll be rewarded with either eternal life for their good deeds or they're punished for their evil deeds. So it's kind of like, you know, you're on this planet right now. Get it right. Find out like what are the good deeds that you got to do. Now I want to take a look at the meaning between the two words. Hinduism and Islam. So first I want to look at Hinduism. Hinduism is the ancient religion of India. It's the third largest religion in the world with over 1 billion followers. And for many people, it's very difficult to understand what Hinduism is because in so many ways, it is more like a disorganized religion than an organized religion. Hinduism, the root word Hindu has geographical significance and was used originally for those people who live beyond the river Sindhu or the region of waters by the river Indus. Hindus themselves call their religion Sanatana Dharma, meaning eternal law. So Hindus don't actually say I'm Hindu. The only language Hindu is called Hindu is in English. For Islam, Islam is an Arabic word and it means submission or surrender in ultimate peace. Muslim means a believer in one God. Allah. But that's pretty much what they mean in a nutshell. Now let's take a look at the differences with their scriptures. In Hinduism, they use Vedas, Upanishad, Puranas, Gita, Smriti, and Sruti are the oral scriptures. And in Islam, the Quran and the traditions of the holy last messenger Muhammad called the Sunnah, which is found in narrations or hadiths. And I've started to read the Bhagavad Gita, the, the Hindu book, as well as the Quran for myself, just to kind of find out two completely different writing styles and tones. But that's just me, I like learning. And it's life changing just to understand someone else's beliefs. All right, let's take a look at the differences with the holy days. In Hinduism, there is Diwali, Holi, Ramnavimi, Hanuman Jayanti, Ganesh Chaturthi, and many more. There are many holy days in Hinduism, which differ based on the region that you go also. In Islam, there's of course Ramadan, the month of fasting, Eid al-Adha, which is the feast of the sacrifices, and Eid al-Fatir, which is the festival at the end of Ramadan. Pretty simple. Muslims kind of keep it just very simple. Hindus, they like to party. And I mean that in the most respectful way possible. Clergy, clergy is completely different as well because Hinduism doesn't actually have any official clergy, but some of the titles in Hinduism are gurus, that's a spiritual teacher. Yogis is a person who is proficient in yoga. Rishis is a Hindu sage or saint. And then there's Brahmins, which is a member of the highest Hindu caste. There are also priests that perform certain rituals as well as priestesses inside of Hindu they have monks who are members of a religious community of men typically living under vows of poverty and some live under a vow of chastity and nuns as well show up in Hinduism and that is pretty much the female version of a monk. 
Instead of Islam, there's the Imam, and Imam leads congregational prayers in a mosque. In Shia Islam, these are also seen as the leaders of the Muslim community. In Islam, there's also sheikhs, and sheikhs are commonly the chief or head of an Arab tribe, family, or village. Then there's a mullahs, and that's a title that precedes the name of a respected Muslim religious leader. And mullahs is a Muslim learned in Islamic theology and sacred law. And muftis is a Muslim legal expert who can give rulings on religious matters. So the main practices and the most popular practices that each of these religions are known for, starting off with Hinduism, there is meditation, there's also yoga, and there's a lot of contemplation, as well as yagna, which is communal worship, and people bring offerings in the temple as well. The most common practice out of that list is probably yoga or meditation. And Islam, the five pillars of Islam, which are the testament that there is one God and Muhammad is his messenger, that's called the Shahada. And then there's a prayer five times a day, fasting during the month of Ramadan, giving to the poor, as well as the pilgrimage to Mecca, and that is called the Hajj. Their places of worship are also different. Inside of Hinduism, there's uh, the temple or the mandir, and in Islam, they worship in mosques or masjids, and they are the most common places of worship, as well as there's community centers and any other place considered clean by Islamic law, you're free to worship there as well. Interesting fact, many Hindu temples are also located near rivers or other bodies of water. The style and the shape of certain temples changes according to the location. So you can go to different parts of the world, you may see some variations here and there. Muslims worship in mosques, as I mentioned, which show less geographical ties to the location that they're in, as do Hindu temples. And they're relatively large in size when you stack them side by side with Hindu temples. Mosques also contain large ceiling paintings and some even have extra facilities like doctor's offices. Now let's talk about the origin and location. So Islam is a monotheistic Abrahamic religion and it was founded by the prophet Muhammad in the Arabian Peninsula at Mount Hira in the 7th century CE. And when I say founder, by the way, I don't mean that he invented the teachings of Islam. Rather, I mean that he was the instrument used to proclaim the message of the Quran first. And Abrahamic religion means that it has its roots from the prophet Abraham. Hinduism, on the other hand, is a religious tradition that originated in the Indian subcontinent in the pre-classical era, about 1500 to 500 BC. CE, and it does not have any specific founder. Hindus today, you can find them mainly in India, Nepal, Mauritius, and Hinduism also has significant populations in Fiji, Bhutan, United Arab Emirates, and other parts of the world. Muslims, by the percentage of the total population in a particular region, it looks like this. 24.8% are in Asia, Oceania, 91.2% are in the Middle East and North Africa, 29.6% are in Sub-Saharan Africa, and around 6% percent are in Europe. 0.6 percent are located in the Americas. The second last difference I'm looking at is the goal of the religion. First, when it comes to Hinduism, Hindus aim to break the cycle of birth, death, and reincarnation and attain salvation, which sparks an interesting question. If you could choose who you could reincarnate as, who would you pick? <laughs> Let me know down below in the comment section. For Islam, the general goal is to fulfill your responsibility of this life through following the Holy Quran and the Hadith and serving humanity and submitting to the will of God. In terms of achieving salvation, in Hinduism you can achieve salvation by reaching enlightenment by the path of knowledge, the path of devotion, or the path of good deeds. Attaining salvation in Islam is done through the belief in one God, remembrance of God, repenting of your sins regularly, and praying and trusting in God's mercy. And the number one difference is the belief in God. So this is probably the most important part of any religion anyways, would be the belief in the God or deities. Because of course that would shape why you practice a certain religion. For Hindus, right, there are many gods, over 30 million types of gods, although the exact number is pretty impossible to actually calculate. 30 million is a pretty good estimate. Having millions of gods, Hindus have a wide variety of core beliefs. 
the diversification in Hinduism is in the possibility that each believer may follow a unique philosophy and worship different gods. Now the Hindu trinity consists of Brahma the creator, Vishnu the preserver and Shiva the destroyer. Their feminine counterparts are Swavasrati the wife of Brahma, Lakshmi the wife of Vishnu and Parvati the wife of Shiva. In Islam completely simple. God is the one true creator. God has always existed, none existed before him, and will ever exist after him. God exists forever. He transcends life and death. He knows all and he sees all. So before I get out of here, here's another Differences episode that you can check out right now. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss any future FTD Facts episodes. Can't wait to see you all next time in another episode Keep on learning, stay educated. See you soon. Very interesting. I always say every video should be a learning, a learning point for us. If you didn't know these facts, learn them. I didn't know them. I'm learning some of these things for the first time. I mean, the life after death thing. Do you think it's really possible for someone to come back as an animal or whatever it is? At the end of the day, I feel like we're all believing in life after death. So I'm trying to think. It's just something. Also, like, I think when he was talking about number eight, he was talking about how he's also looking. I like how he mentioned that he's not only reading the Quran, but he's also reading the Hindu holy scriptures, I guess, if that's what they're called. And it's good because... You can't judge a book by its cover. All most of the things that we hear or think we know, we've actually heard them from someone else. The best thing to do is actually read the Quran to find out what Islam is for. It's all about Hinduism, read the scriptures, Christianity, read the Bible, Torah for the Jews. You have to put yourself in the, in these people's shoes and read for yourself to find out what these religions are all about. And then also Hinduism, when it comes to the multiple gods, that's insane. So isn't that just confusion? That's just too much. Doesn't that create confusion or fights or something? I don't know. I'm just wondering. It's very, very insane. Otherwise, like I said, every video is a learning point. I hope you guys learned something new like I did. And thank you to the person that suggested this. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And of course, do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.